Would these samurai weapons from Final Fantasy XIV work as actual weapons? When I first decided to do this series, I didn't realize how many weapons there were in this game. I could probably make an entire series just using the samurai weapons. That said, I won't be covering every single sword that they have. That would just be way too much for me. However, I will be covering some ones that I think are notable or worth talking about, or I just think that they look cool. Starting with Tengudo, it has a curved hilt, which is definitely unorthodox for katanas. If it were one-handed, that would make a lot of sense, because you see this sort of thing in swords like the Talwar or Shamshir, and it's kind of to keep the blade more secure in your hand when you're going on a heavy swing. However, with this being a two-handed weapon, it doesn't make sense because two hands offer good security. However, design-wise, it's perfectly functional. I mean, it doesn't add anything, but it doesn't detract from anything. With the Hellhound Katana, the lower portion of the blade seems to be, you know, blunted. However, that's not really an issue because the upper portions of the blade are usually the business end. It does have a complex guard, which is definitely unorthodox for katanas. I'll get to where that kind of comes up later in this episode video. However, as it is, it seems a lot like a Swiss saber, which was a sword that existed and was pretty good, but, you know, a katana form. The, sh the Shin Zantetsuken is pretty much a heavily modified Egyptian kopesh. So, not technically a katana. Obviously. It's not quite a kopesh, it seems like it would function just like a regular sword, whereas the kopesh functioned more kind of like an axe. This one's just offset, which is weird. And the knuckle guard there seems very beefy, just like in the front, so it's not really offering anything else. If you just took that material and molded it to the side, like the hellhound katana that I was talking about before, that would offer more protection for the same weight. So it's just kind of a weird design that's not the best. The Bokuto is a wooden sword. It's a practice sword, but, you know, you can bonk things with it. The Afrit's Katana has two features that are pretty notable. There's a bit at the bottom of the blade that's thinner than the rest of the blade. And this seems like it could be to kind of shift the point of balance higher up on the blade, which would make it pretty solid as a cutter. I mean, katanas in general are good cutters because they're curved blades and the weight that they have, but this one would be quite good at the exchange of having tip maneuverability. The other feature is it doesn't have a traditional katana style guard or suba. It has what seems a bit more like a modified European style cross guard, which isn't better, it's just different. The Japanese suba goes all around, so it kind of protects from side blows as well as from the front, but European blades focus almost entirely on protecting from the front and back. Aside from things like the messer, but whatever. The Meliferous Magtana has a kind of similar guard to what I just said, you know, a European style guard. However, it has more of that on the back, which is pretty weird. I can't really offhand think of a reason why somebody would have that in a sword. With the Katana of Crags, the hilt kind of reminds me of the Darksaber from the Mandalorian, so I, I kind of like that. The Wave Katana also has a knuckle guard, and I am going to talk about that a bit more in depth, but not right now because there's a better example later. Yes, this is me trying to string you along to watch more of this video because that's better for me. However, I'm also going through these in level order. The Mithrite Uchi Katana is pretty much exactly what you would think of when you think of a samurai sword. However, I'm going to take this time to talk about the difference between an Uchi Katana and a Katana. So from what I've heard, Katana is a slightly more modern term that kind of encompasses Japanese swords in general, although it does refer to a specific sword in the modern mind, and Uchi Katana was the name for that sword before they came up with the kind of overarching umbrella term of Katana. So an Uchi Katana is pretty much a Katana. 
Historically, they were used by the lower class soldiers because the higher class soldiers had a curved tachi, which was better as a cavalry sword, and the uchigatana was better as an infantry blade. However, eventually the uchigatana replaced the tachi, and then they started calling that the katana. And I could be wrong here. There is a lot of differing information on these sorts of things. Like with the Odachi and the Nodachi, some people think that they're exactly the same sword. Some people have give them marked differences. Anyway, Flame Captain Samurai Blade. I told you that I'd be talking more about the knuckle guard on these types of katanas, and now I'm going to do it because this one looks more like the traditional Shingunto, which these had. For a period of time, Japan was like, hey, everybody's using sabers because sabers are great. Let's modify our katanas to look slightly more like those. And you get the Shingunto, which is pretty much the Flame Captain Samurai Blade. But not too long after that, Japan decided to go more with nationalism and went back to the katana at its roots. Because, you know, in the end, it's really similar to a saber. And with the Mithrite Tachi, it's not really curved enough to be a Tachi, because those generally had a heavy curve. The Gunrumaro is weird, but I like it. It doesn't have a Suba, and that's kind of one of the big differentiations that it has from a regular Katana. However, this picture makes me think that it has the blade on the inside of the curve, which makes it kind of more like a Dacian Falx, which I like. I don't know, it might not be like that, but it looks neat to me. The Katana of the Dragon Lotus, way too busy, way too bulky to be really too useful as a blade. The Hellfire Katana looks really cool and edgy, and it has a kind of sword-catching blade thing in the front, which likely would be more prone to breakage on a real weapon, however it would up your defensive capabilities. Not really up your defensive capabilities, but give you a few more options. With the Tsukiyomi's Moonlight Chokuto, it is a Chokuto that was a kind of Japanese sword that was straight. Usually these had more complex guards, but I mean, it still works. The Night Steel Katana has a longer outshoot in the front of the guard, which I criticized the previous sword for having that in the back, but in the front it makes more sense because, you know, that's the business end of... That, that's where you're pointing. The Empyrean Tachi is literally on fire, so that would be a little uncomfortable to hold. I know this seems obvious, but like talking about flaming weapons, that is a design feature that you would need to pay attention to if you are creating one in a mythical world. Amakura Ultima has the blade off-center, which is weird, especially when it's only held in place by two thin beams. That would be a lot more fragile than, you know, just a solid piece of steel. But that would put the weight more forward, so you could kind of do more axe-like cuts rather than sword cuts. So, if it didn't break, it wouldn't be bad, it would just function kind of differently. With the Dwarven Mithril Uchigatana, I can't really quantify why, but I absolutely love this design. I mean, one notable feature is it has serrations on the top of the blade, and that's not really ideal. I mean, it, it's, it's meh. But I just really like the design. The green, you know, kind of looks like jade, kind of gives it an older look visually. However, the design structure itself looks kind of futuristic, so it's like a really cool balance between those. I don't know, I, I just really like it. And lastly, the Crysterium Samurai Blade. This one is pretty weird, it's like a rapier grip on a katana. Which, if you use it like a rapier is intended to do, you know, fingering the guard, which is which kind of puts the blade more in line with your hands so that way you can thrust better, you won't really do this too well because even though katanas are great at thrusting, they're more designed for cutting. However, since these are two-handed weapons, you won't really be doing that, and using this design two-handed would probably be quite functional. Should I keep going with Final Fantasy XIV weapons classes? There are a lot more, and watch this Bloodborne video right here. And subscribe.